Welcome to Thinking Like a Lawyer with your hosts, Ellie Mistal and Joe Patrice, talking about legal news and pop culture, all while thinking like a lawyer, here on Legal Talk Network. Hello, welcome to another edition of Thinking Like a Lawyer. I'm Joe Patrice from Above the Law. I am joined by my colleague, Ellie Mistal. I have so many undergarments on to deal with this cold weather that I don't think I can pee until I get all the way home. I think that's fair. It's interesting that you mentioned that it's um, cold because, you know, we're in New York and it is definitely cold, but uh, we certainly aren't getting it as bad as some of the rest of the country. So we send our sympathies to them is kind of what I'm saying. I mean, I guess you do. I don't, I'm, I'm, I'm pissed at all people of European descent on days like these, okay? Like, I, 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 have this, I have the cultural institutional memory that I don't belong here. I did not choose to come here. And every time snot freezes on my face, I feel the pain of my ancestors Aww. who were brought to this land. It is too cold for me. All right? And I mean, not for all African Americans. It is too cold for me. Fair enough. Yeah, no, uh, it, it's it's not great. Um, <laughs> and I'm chasing this by, I'm leaving for Chicago, so uh, it's going to get even worse. So, Although I think it's warming up there. I think the, the bad stuff's passed. Aren't you from Iowa, though? I mean, don't they just have, like... I have lived in like Iowa this before. and, like, biofuels is all, like, all you got to warm yourself, right? I, mean, I was born in Minneapolis, so even colder, right? So... <laughs> Yeah, it's cold, but we'll transition a little bit uh, and talk about where we are, because we are not in our offices as we usually would be for this podcast, but we are in the Midtown Hilton recording at the Legal Tech New York show, or Legal Week, or Legal Week The Experience, or Legal Smackdown, I don't know. Whatever they call this show now, we're here. Uh, So we're going to talk about that for a little bit. In a world. But first... Where tech companies need to sell products. (laughs) Exactly. Speaking of tech companies that need to sell products, are you missing calls? Are you spread too thin? Interruptions kill your productivity, but clients demand a quick response. The U.S.-based professional receptionists at Smith AI help law firms screen new clients and schedule appointments by phone and website chat. Plus, Smith AI integrates with your software, including Clio and LawPay. Plans start at just $60 per month. Get a free trial at smith.ai. That was you were professional. I was set up by the best. There. The that was a great focus. <laughs> gives you strength. <laughs> but yeah, so we're here uh, at Legal Tech. Uh, it's been a good show so far. It's still going on, but we're, you know, on day whatever it is. I don't know, three, four, something like that. So you just got here. I've been here this whole time. How do you? Uh, how do you like it so far? Yeah. So it's a little bit quieter than it has been in past years. Um, mm-hmm. I think one of the big uh, reasons for the for the lack of noise is that not everybody's here, right? Yeah, there were definitely some travel delays and issues. And so that's interesting, but I think it's also interesting um, in terms of what is the future of big tech vendor conferences um, like this, you know, in a, in a world of telecommuting, in, you know, yeah. in, in a world uh, where you can have meetings and demo products much easier from your own office or for, for your own home, you know, what is the kind of long-term viability of bringing everybody to a, you know, boondoggle yeah. uh, city and having a big conference like this? Well, and, um, it's interesting that you go there because we had a panel discussion on Monday that dealt with this. Uh, and we talked about just kind of the nature of the tech show and what people want to get out of it uh, and whether or not that delivers. And you're right. I mean, one point that came up in that was that this show used to be, you know, going back all those years, this show was about selling copiers and fax machines, physical hardware that people needed to come and see and run. And obviously that's not what, you know, now software, we can do this remotely, but why do we still do it? And I think a a lot of people said the reason we do this is that there's still a personal networking component to coming to a place. Uh, And that's why we still need shows like this. Even if the show has changed in that they aren't making their sales probably on the floor like they might have in the 80s, there is a reason why people come. They do want to see each other. And frankly, from a vendor perspective, they want to see competition. They want to look at what their uh, competitors are doing, see if that's something they want to emulate, know where they are. I mean, consolidation's the name of the game in this space. That's another reason why things get quieter is uh, 
half these companies got bought by somebody, uh, you know, and <laughs> and that consolidation, I mean, that's another thing. You walk around that floor to see who you want to buy next. I, I think it's a great point that you just made about how a show like this starts from, don't you need a fax machine for your office? Mm. And I guess my question for, as I, uh, when I walk the floor later today, you know, one of my questions is going to be really, what is that technology that kind of all law for- firms need to have at this point, right? Mm. Like it's, it's very obvious, look at me, with the benefit of hindsight, that a fax machine was something that you just needed to have to run a modern legal operation back in the day. Right. However, I'm sure if you took me back to 1987, mm-hmm. you would find a lot of lawyers who were just like, why can't I just hire mm. Bugsy? Who has his motorbike and he goes down to file it himself, right? Like, you know, trying to get law firms, even in 1985, to go to understand that a fax machine was better was difficult, right? Mm -hmm. So what's the technology today that all kind of modern law firms should have, Mm -hmm. but there's still some firms kind of resisting and holding out? Well, the thing that everybody definitely has to have is security. Uh, Becoming the next Panama Papers is is a risk. Uh, and they need to have security and they need to get, and I think that one of the things that's happened over the six years that I've been coming to this show that's been encouraging is at least at shows like this, you're starting to see more people have some comfortability with the concept of the cloud. I think everyone's kind of reached that point, at least at this show. Though I do know that there are people who don't come to the show who aren't tech savvy, who, who probably haven't. But that realization that Yes, it's scary that your data goes somewhere else, but it goes somewhere else because they are going to watch that basket better than you ever will. Mm. Uh, like Microsoft's not going to let somebody get in that basket, whereas you know, in your closet, that could easily happen. Uh, so cybersecurity and uh, faith in the cloud, I think, is very important. I think that people need to start thinking about mobility a lot more. I think that the cost of getting an office. I mean, we, I did a story about Aaron Fox uh, last year touring their offices. And uh, it's also kind of true about White and Case, whose offices I toured. Everybody's leaning towards smaller offices, small, smaller footprints, because it's expensive to have these offices and people have the tools to work from home. So if you can work securely and efficiently from other locations, that's technology that everyone needs. You're right, Joe. Microsoft is not going to let you get into that basket. Mm -hmm. Um, Though that does remind me, I need to turn off the Kremlin app on my FaceTime um, to make sure that Apple isn't spying on me. Right, but it, but those it happens all the time. What are you talking about? Their data breaches all the time. Like I understand. Again, right. I don't want to. I don't want to be told. I don't want to tell the cloud to get off my lawn. Mm-hmm. But there is a reasonable fear that the major global corporation is not going to care about your small time law data as much as they're going to care about Fortnite's data. And if even Fortnite's data can, can be broken into, what is Apple, what is Google, what, what are these services going to do to really protect your client secrets? Well, sure. There, there's no guarantees in this universe. But I'm just saying that you're, you're playing the odds, right? The odds are they are going to do a better job of it than your IT person who may or may not be that all that savvy with this sort of thing. So, and these companies are spending, and yes, they are getting breached here and there, but they're investing in the best people uh, for this, and that's all you really can do. Uh, but yeah. I thought you were going to go somewhere. I didn't think you were going to say cybersecurity, although I think that's mm-hmm. when you say it, that's probably the right answer. Um, I thought you were going to go um, towards case management, because right. um, it just seems to me that, like you know, there again back in the day, if you went back to 90, 1986, there are lawyers who have their file cabinets and they are committed to their you know Dewey Decimal System. Right, and then you had to bring them slowly. Oh, here's an iMac. Mm-hmm. Um, the files are in the computer. Like you had to right. bring them slowly there. Now having kind of up to date modern case management software seems like just a necessity. Oh yeah, that a lot of firms are still resisting. Yes, no, I, I definitely think that you need to have a good practice management, whether it's case or matter, transactional matter. And I think that that's very true of the smaller places, and that's where that's the sort of thing that places like Clio do, offer those customizable panes that you can look at and just kind of run your practice through. No, I think that's important. I also think, depending on what your practice is, you're probably going to need a document management system. Uh, mm. That's mm. that's what something that I manage, which I always had Wait, when what, I was... What's wrong with Google Docs? 
it's not nearly as robust as <laughs> what you're going to want. And that's the thing. Like I, I worked at a big firm. We had iManage back in the day. And you know, iManage basically, as far as I could tell, all it did was save my documents and put that little number at the bottom. Um, <laughs> but now, what the so you talk to them now about the sorts of things they do, their logic is your knowledge base is sitting there. What can we do with it? They have. AI built in so that you can start searching through the history of your firm's documents for the things that you need by running these smart searches that are learning where things are, how things are coded, the language that you need to be using. It's valuable stuff. And, and I think that's been a real trend that I've seen the last you know couple of tech shows is this move of people to say, I have a bunch of stuff now because of what I have been doing. But, I have been doing document management, so I have all this stuff. What can I now do with the stuff that I have that like, may be a value add? I mean, I've heard um, document review companies talking about how we now are thinking of offering more consulting side services because we have all this stuff and we can run searches on it and learn everything about it. We're actually put aside the litigation, we're now the people in a good position to walk up and say, did you know you're overspending on paper here or whatever? Because mm. they can do that because they have all the emails and everything because they're running them for compliance side because that's the other trend. The reactive document review is giving way to more in-house counsel saying, I want everything always to be right, saved right. so that I can run compliance. So, Let's close with the other big trend that you were talking about earlier okay. in terms of where we at, at in terms of legal tech adoption, are we still in the kind of learning curve innovation phase, mm. or are we now bringing kind of mature. more mature products to market? I think there is definitely a maturity trend. Um, when At least when I first started coming to these shows, I felt like there was more of the kind of exciting Wild West of, look what I just invented. Uh, now I feel like that happens occasionally, but more or less the people I meet with are you know us, we've been doing this for, for a few years now. Here's the little things we're doing. Here's the ways we're just making it faster, more efficient, easier for you. It's not, and that's a good thing. Like it may be make for uh, a few less sexy headlines, but it's a good thing for the industry. Yeah, how do you write that press release? Yeah, I mean, it, exactly, right? It, Our product hard. now 1.3% better. Yeah, and, and I mean, that is kind of how they do it, but <laughs> you, gotta, you gotta kind of view those things as good news, so. I think that's been that's been a trend. Uh, a lot of these vendors you've seen for a while, and the ones that you haven't, you know, that aren't here anymore, uh, got absorbed into a bigger behemoth somewhere along the way, most likely. So, just making things better. Well, I'm glad you've been here all week. I am too. <laughs> it's been I'm a lot of fun. Glad that I have not had to be here all week because I really need to pee now. Okay. And I've only been here for a few hours. Okay, cool. We barely talked. Uh, I think we've only been talking for like 15 minutes or something like that. Yeah. You're kidding <laughs> me, right? I mean, at least that's that clock. Come on, that's not fair. I've, I've, got, I've used all my jokes. Wow. You are just really in a, in a dry spell, huh? Or is it just you're, you're on TV so much now that you use all your good jokes on other people? I use a lot of good jokes on TV, and they're all based on, like, Lindsey Graham now. And I, Okay. I, I don't have the, trend, the segue from Lindsey Graham to your to document. To a real killer Lexus joke? Yeah, to your document management system. I don't, mm. I don't, I don't have that club in my bag. Oh, that's a shame. Yeah. Well, what else do you want to talk about then? Lawrence yeah. can cut this out. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Or, or not. I mean, I think this is this is gold here. This is what people are coming to hear. Yeah. Yeah. No. Um, Ellie, Phil. Yeah. <laughs> so, uh, you know, it, it's been it's been good. I think one of the things we talked about was whether or not a show like this, to the extent you feel you need a show where everyone gets together from a networking perspective, is New York where you want to be? Uh, if it is, or you know, if it isn't, fine. If it is maybe not Midtown, so it'll be cheaper. The expenses of this place are astounding. Uh, the horror story I heard the other day was a certain vendor had two suites upstairs, and they wanted to have coffee and tea for two days. So what do you think coffee and tea service for two rooms for two days would run you? In New York City? This is like, in this hotel, yeah. yeah. This is like the Howard Schultz, like, do you know what a box of Cheerios costs question? Sort of, yes. I have no idea. Yeah. I have, live in the suburbs. I have two kids. Right. Ask, I know how much a box of Cheerios costs. Right. Do you have, do, do you want, uh, look, uh, throw so a number. You want, you want a room and you want tea. No, they've got the rooms. They've got they the room. just they want, just want the tea service. They just want tea, hot water and coffee. Oh, that can't be more than, 
That can't be more than 100 bucks. It, it can. <laughs> um, yeah. How much? $5,700. That's, <laughs> that's for boiled water yeah, yeah. and some leaves. Yeah, yeah. Man, see, they are having you in the wrong place because you go down to Canal Street, they can get you some hot water and leaves for like eight fifty, <laughs> right? Like that's not a problem. Yeah. But no. when you're saying like, oh, should they even come to New York anymore? I mean, we just are. We were just talking yeah. about how maybe a conference like this doesn't need to exist at all, no, right? Yeah. If you're going to have the conference exist at all, then mm -hmm. you have to give people a place where they might actually want to come to, right. and they might actually, you know, they feel important. New York. That's the thing about I New York that does better than any mm -hmm. other city on the planet. It makes you feel important when you're here, mm -hmm. right? I'm not saying it's the best city in terms of like culture or food or, you know, whatever, but there is no city like New York that you roll into and you're walking around Midtown mm -hmm. with a little badge on your on your vest with a little mm -hmm. little uh, uh, something in your pocket and you feel like you're Leonardo yeah. DiCaprio, you're yeah. the king of the world. You don't feel that in San Diego. Oh, right? You go to wow. San we Diego. Cap capping on San Diego, he's in the room. <laughs> <laughs> no, in San Diego is like I like I like some good Mexican now, right? But yeah. you don't feel like particularly like like a titan in industry, right? You want to bring these people here to make them feel like they are super important. The only place to do that is New York. Yeah, no, I mean I agree. I I think we kind of all concluded that New York was what where we wanted to show. We just suggested whether or not it might be easier because part of the issue is the the floor plan is hard. You know the way these these buildings are. There's not a a huge like you go to. You go to a town that's very much about conferences. You go to Vegas, that exhibit hall is one giant room that everything's in. Here, it's on multiple floors and different little corners. So maybe the issue is we need to find the places in New York that are that big, uh, whether it's a Javits Center or, uh, or you know, whatever. Can't do this in L.A.? Ain't nobody in this hotel pretty enough it, to be in L.A. Literally nobody is talking about moving at this point. I literally just said New York. Um, annoyed that you were... Yeah. Dog in my city. I was not. I was saying we would want to stay in New York and we need to find <laughs> a different hotel that like had that sort of thing. And, and those are hard to find in Midtown. And maybe that's the reason it goes to Brooklyn or something like that. And now but. you sound like Amazon, though, right? Well, let's go to Long Island City. There's a lot of space there. No, like if you want to have this kind of conference, Midtown Manhattan is probably the best place for it. Mm. It's it, yes, it's expensive. Also, you're expensing it, aren't you? Right. Like, what's the point of having right. all that venture right. money, capital money m well, um, if you can't pay $1,500 for tea? Right. Well, I mean, <laughs> that, that is true. The, the company that was complaining about it does have several, several million dollars. So maybe, maybe you've got a point. But yeah, no, it's, it's interesting. I, I, I do think that there's probably other ways of organizing. But. If we're going to talk really about like, making a conference like this better, what I would ask you is, like, what different things should people be doing at their booths? Right. Right. Because like the booth set up and, and if you've never been to one of these, it's it's exactly what you think. Everybody's got like a stall and you walk through and they've got like maybe like some Tic Tacs or like a keychain if they're really going for it. And they have like their big logo and like a laptop. Right. And again, mm -hmm. now that you've got me thinking about this like old school, like selling yeah. a copier thing, when they were selling copiers, man, they had dancing people and, you know, not a lot of clothes and they were bringing them in and they were like on the copier and you could like imagine yourself like copying things. Right. I, and that's I, just not what we have I'm today. I'm so, so confident that isn't true. However, <laughs> um, I kind of am leaning towards, I think, the you need something. Potentially, one thing that Bob Ambrosi mentioned the other day was Clio runs their own conference. And one of the things they do is they're kind of communists about booths. They don't let people play around with it. Everyone gets the same kind of booth to put their logo on. Uh, and meetings can, can flow out of foot traffic. But by doing that, by making things small, they're able to efficiently put it so that you actually have to walk by in the natural flow of traffic, everybody's booth. Here, you have to go out of your way to go into halls, whereas there, it's on your path to the keynote. So that was an idea that was, that was mentioned. Uh, yeah, I mean, it's a, it's a hard job, right? And I, we don't begrudge, you know, like ALM does a great job of trying to make a lot of different stakeholders happy. But, you know... We just thought it was a useful conversation as people who come here a lot and have different perspectives. And so that was what we did on Monday. It was very, very productive. Have we filled now? Yeah, I think we're, I think we're good. So anyway. Because I got dangerously close to suggesting that they hire prostitutes for their 
for their products, which you is did. not what I wanted to suggest. Yeah, but I you saw were getting there. It. I saw it from where my mouth was. Yeah. So like, I need to get off the mic now. So I'm trying. to Fair talk. enough. Okay, so we will do that. So, thank you for listening. Thanks for us being here. Uh, thanks us. Thanks. Thanks to us. us. Yeah. Um, but uh, thanks for listening. You should be subscribed. You should be giving reviews. Write things down about how awesome we are. It helps the algorithms pick up how uh, and give us some more play. You should also be following us on Twitter. I'm at Joseph Patrice. He's at L-E-N-Y-C. You can you know, read above the law. You should watch him on TV. He's on it a lot. And uh, with that, I think, oh, and thanks to Smith AI for sponsoring. And that is everything. So talk to you later. They should never let us record when it's below 30 degrees outside. Next week, we should have a special guest. So that'll be exciting and uh, cool. Tease. All right. Bye. If you'd like more information about what you've heard today, please visit LegalTalkNetwork.com. You can also find us at AboveTheLaw.com, ATLRedline.com, iTunes, RSS, Twitter, and Facebook. The views expressed by the participants of this program are their own and do not represent the views of, nor are they endorsed by, Legal Talk Network, its officers, directors, employees, agents, representatives, shareholders, and subsidiaries. None of the content should be considered legal advice. As always, consult a lawyer.